Hey everyone, welcome to Zack Attack Reviews. Today I'm going to be ranking the, my favorite Spider-Man movies. So when I'm doing this list, it's going to be like obviously 9 is the, my least favorite, number 1 is going to be my favorite, but I love or like all the Spider-Man movies. None of these movies are bad, just some are not as good as others. So if this is not your the, the definitive list or your it's supposed to be a list for you, it's the, my list. I'm just telling you what I think are my favorite nine movies in, in the order that they're in. So I'm going to say for number nine is Spider-Man Far From Home. And I think Spider-Man Far From Home has been a divisive movie amongst the people who like Spider-Man and likes the character. You know, we just came off of Homecoming, which was generally played, praised by most people in the MCU and people who like Spider-Man as a fresh start, as a, a good start for this Spider-Man. And then for Far From Home, for me, it kind of took a little bit of nosedive with the logic and the coincidences that were happening in the story. Some of the decisions Peter made that just didn't make any sense, especially coming from the last movie. And, and also, my major problem with this version of Spider-Man has been he's been like more Iron Boy, Iron Man Jr. And I think that this it really reinforced that he's supposed to be an Iron Man shadow. And I get the MCU's his own universe. As a big Spider-Man fan, I feel Spider-Man is a bigger character than Iron Man. He's supposed to be treated as such. But I also understand that at the same time, he's a little kid. So they had to find a way to realistically put him in there. This movie was very divisive for me in particular. I love Jake Gyllenhaal's um, performance as Mysterio. Mysterio is one of those characters that's cool on the page but pretty lame if you really think about it. And they found a way to make it, just keep the character that is on the page would make him a lot cooler. And Jake Gyllenhaal took it so seriously, which I love, and which I, I see that all everybody takes, all the villains have taken it very seriously in these movies. And he, he just knocked it out of park. And the nightmare sequences when he had uh, Peter in the illusions, amazing. Coming in at number eight, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I really like this movie a lot, but it's just has barred by like a lot of messy planning by the executives. Things that I really liked was uh, the relationship between Get Gwen and Peter and that tug and pull of him trying to keep his promise to her father. Uh, the suit was amazing. It's still one of the most amazing suits that we got in live action. So close to the comics. And, and the web slinging, especially that first 15 to 20 minute action sequences was pure orgasmic Spider-Man. It was so good. And Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, and just his Spider-Man, maybe not his Peter, is the best Spider-Man that we've had from the first movie and the second movie because he represents the character in a way always telling jokes even in a, in a dangerous situation out thinking his opponents being very athletic and and very just very funny it, i think that he did, had a great representation the closest that we've gotten to a pure spider-man on screen now the things that were bad about this movie also one last thing before i do that is that electro's god mode once he got past that weird two paid character they had jamie fox doing when he got to like the, the god mode and the action sequence that was happening at the end with peter that was all pun intended amazing but there was too many plot lines in this movie they wanted they were trying to be a little too ambitious and didn't have enough time in this movie to deal with everything they were dealing with trying to set up the center six for the separate movie and trying to reveal peter's parents and where they are which is not something that's really explored in the comics so i feel like they were trying to like create their own storyline and then we still had him going back and forth with Gwen and him dealing with other issues around the city with villains. It was just too much going on and then and this Harry abruptly turning into the new goblin even though we didn't get really a, get a green goblin in this universe and the shadowy figure it was just too much going on in this movie at the same time it didn't have a clear picture and it didn't come to a a good conclusion at the end like obviously and we always be scorched in my brain of Mary, uh, Gwen falling from that tower and, and them doing that from the comics and how beautifully it was shot and how heartbroken Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker looked after he realized she was dead. That was that's forever uh, sketching a lot of people's brains, even if you didn't like the movie. But the actual ending and the wrapping up of everything, it it did wasn't it wasn't great. It wasn't great. I still like the movie, but it, it just wasn't great. Coming in number seven, um, Spider-Man 3, a movie that has similar problems to Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, I'm going to start with the, just the bad real quick since it's a lot of similar things. Too many villains, too many plot points going on at the same time. Harry turning into the new goblin, just like in Amazing Spider-Man 2, turning into a new goblin, but like it just not being fleshed out if they were going to do that story and they were kind of building up to it for the first two ones. They should have just had him be the villain and Peter deal with that or just have two villains and have him dealing with 
you know, the villain that the person he wronged by killing his father, but it's a complicated situation. And then Sandman, but then they inserted Venom, and then the Venom was weird. And then you know, it just it was just too many plot points going on at the same time, and not a cohesive vision. But the movie still has some great moments in it. And a lot of people make fun of Bully Peter Parker, you know, the one that's dancing and and saying all the weird stuff, the emo look and all that. But I thought that all that stuff, in retrospect, now that I'm older, I think that stuff was great because if you look at the first two movies, Peter was quiet, he was to himself, he was, you know, always being bullied, and this was him flipping the switch, and that's what the symbiote is supposed to do. So it seems silly because, you know, the, the Spider-Man movies and Sam Raimi ones were a little bit uh, quirky and, and cheesy. But it works. It just made sense within the story. Um, after, like you know, in the moment, I was like, "What the hell is this?" But now that I can look back, I, I actually like those moments and, and get it. And the action sequences, especially when um, Peter and Harry are fighting, and he's trying to get the ring, and he keeps stopping him, and he's just trying to kill Peter. Oh, that was fantastic. Everything with Sandman, the Sandman CGI has been so great in this movie, and the fighting sequences between them were, were awesome. So like a lot of the action sequences, a lot of the, some of the story plots were good it was just too much going on especially in the third act and it, once again it didn't wrap up in a way that was satisfying coming in at number six is the amazing spider-man the first one it was a modern more modern take well, at the time modern take a, a darker modern take on the character peter andrews peter parker was okay but his spider-man was amazing he had like to me he still has the best spider-man out of the three spider-mans that we've gotten so far his, his probably has the weakest peter parker because they made him really emo all the time which made me think like if he was to eventually get the symbiote how dark would he get <laughs> he was so angry and sulking in, in this movie but the cinematography the fight sequences um the way that they were trying to do new things with his story with the parents obviously the, it didn't end up going anywhere very interesting but for this particular movie i was interested to see how they were going to incorporate his parents because they kind of did it in the 90s cartoon in an interesting way and i was wondering if they were going to do that and it was going to tie into something greater overall i think this was a, a fantastic origin story the lizard was very interesting and the fight scenes between the lizard and peter parker were, were absolutely unintended amazing and uh, yeah just one of my favorite origin stories for a superhero and just a great example of how spider-man should be coming in number five is the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Yeah, this is almost a flawless origin story. We get all the quirks and everything that's going on with Peter. You know, Uncle Ben dies. We have the relationship with Aunt May, his decision to um, not save them and the reasons why I see them as a wrestler is growing from, from that going to a hero. Um, the, <laughs> the organic webbing, which was really interesting choice to make instead of having making web charge uh, cartridges him everything with him and mj relationship between him and um harry and osborne how weird that was it just set the tone for that world set the tone for the trilogy just really not really anything uh bad about it other than his origin story so it spent a lot of time on setting things up and then ramping up instead of just going straight into it something like the later movies like spider-man 2 and spider-man 3 uh, so that's like the only thing i could give to it is that it took a lot of time to get to the exciting exciting stuff even though the stuff that was the build-up was interesting to me because I'm a Spider-Man fan I love seeing it and William Dafoe we all know great actor in many things but he's a fantastic Green Goblin Green Goblin is Spider-Man's arch enemy he is his Joker he's very similar to that character and he just knocks out of the park here like he always does coming in number four is Spider-Man Homecoming a very big surprise for me I was I wasn't sure how this was gonna go because it's his first movie being in the MCU, I really liked his um, his first appearance in uh, Civil War, and I wanted to see what they were going to do with him. And part of this movie started the Iron Boy thing that I didn't like, but he was stripped of it, and he had to learn how to be a hero on his own. And I, I was excited about that because that's the point. And he was making mistakes, and he felt like a kid, which is great because he is in high school. I mean, you know, in the Tobey Maguire ones and the Andrew Garfield movies, he didn't really feel like a child, or they didn't feel like a child, I should say, because they looked older, and everybody was older than they actually were they felt like they were, should more be in college but this Tom Holland because he has a youthful disposition and they put a, like a diverse youthful cast it felt modern like it was happening now they all look like they were 
actual kids and it just made more sense for him to be making the mistakes that he made it just felt more lived in and the action sequences were great and michael keaton is i feel like for spider-man his villains have to hit they have to hit and michael keaton killed it as the vulture and it had one of the great twists not only one of the great twists in the MCU that I like, but also one of my favorite scenes, or one of my, like, might, might be my favorite scene in the MCU. Michael Keaton being Liz's dad, which, you know, blew my mind and play, played on my, my uh, presumptions because, you know, Liz was black, so I didn't expect, or couldn't could even expect that, it, you know, his her, Michael Keaton's vulture would be her father. And just that fear, because as the viewer, you see how dangerous vulture is. And you understand the situation Peter is in, so you you see his face, and that's how you're feeling. It made you feel so tense. So from that scene when he opens the door until they get out of the car, I, you could feel the the energy sucked out of the theater. It was just a great theater experience to go into that. You could hear people sigh of relief when Peter finally says, "No, Liz, I gotta go," and he puts the suit on. So it's just a great movie with a great third act and a great villain performance. Coming in at number three, um, the, people, the most ambitious Spider-Man movie of all time, Spider-Man No Way Home. I gotta say, spoilers ahead, if you have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home, skip, uh, there'll be markers below, down there, so you can skip to whatever if you don't wanna hear anything, but yeah, this, this movie was, a beautiful mess um i really really love this movie but the storyline was a mess and that's why it's not number one for me but it's it's so high up because they just gave us so much matt murdoch coming back um the after that first act of when aunt may dies it feels like a different movie it feels like a dark spider-man movie and bringing in toby's spider-man and andrew's spider-man and for them to be real supported characters not just to come and say hi great responsibility and all that stuff bye they, they were there to support tom holland and it made tom holland spider-man the star because they even though they were funny and relatable and great and still doing cool things they did overpower what Tom Holland was doing. They just boosted it up. And it they brought their experiences into the movie. I think that this movie really put Tom Holland's Spider-Man in a position to be the Spider-Man that a lot of people want him to be. And it makes it feel like Homecoming, Far From Home and No Home, Home was a long origin story for this Spider-Man where he went through a whole lot of shit, made a lot of mistakes, and now he can be the Spider-Man that I grew up on. And I, that's the most thing that I took away from this and I appreciated from this movie. It was absolutely spectacular with everything, all the nostalgia, all the callbacks, all the um, action sequences, some of the the um, story beats were really great, but a lot of that first hour, hour and a half, was the dialogue was bad, it was rushed through, badly edited, and um, just stuff that didn't make sense, um, and like plot holes and stuff like that. So that's the only reason why this is number three and not number one, because of some of the technical story problems that this one had. But other than that, everything else was fantastic. Coming in at number two is Spider-Man 2. A damn near perfect Spider-Man movie when it comes to like a just a solo, it's just him with no help from any other character outside of his world. From beginning to end, Dr. Octopus, that relationship, um, everything going on between Harry and him and MJ and um, him dealing with the fact that he, you know, he was involved in the death of Nora Osborne but can't really tell Harry why or how it happened because he doesn't want to break his image of his father to him. It was just a fantastic story, fantastic performance by Tony McGuire. Obviously gave us the famous train scene where he's holding on and one, I think that might be the most heroic scene that um, I've seen in a comic book movie because uh, probably other than Cap standing up to Thanos' army not knowing that he was going to get help, I guess this would probably be second to that because it was just it was just so great and then just a lot of the storylines and everything that went on with this movie was just fantastic. It was damn near perfect. But if you've been paying attention, you obviously know what number one is to me. This is very debatable. I know a lot of people love Spider-Man 2 more. Some people love Spider No Way Home more. There's big fans of Amazing Spider-Man for some people. Some people think Far From Home. No, that's a lie. Nobody thinks far from them. But I think Into the Spider-Verse is a love letter to all Spider-Man fans. And especially Spider-Man fans that are into 
the comics, especially, you know, know, seeing all the different types of spider people, knowing that, yes, we all love Peter Parker, he will always be the number one Spider-Man, but there are other characters that we know and love from the Spider-Verse that these get shined and they got proper shine in a way where now people can attach to different Spider-Man and see themselves in, in those Spider-Man. And I thought that was really dope. The animation was revolutionary. The action was great. The story, not super like deep, but very good. And had like all the necessary Spider-Man story elements in it for Miles' character to get to where he needs to go. But it didn't repeat the exact beats in the exact same way. And his story ends up helping the other spider people deal with the issues that they have in their universes and i think that this was the blueprint for no way home just to me done better and done more tightly and better uh, a better plot so yeah so it's spider-man and spider is a movie i watched a thousand times netflix you need to put it back on uh, or disney plus one yeah i need to get this damn movie so i can watch it again and um yeah let me know what you think down below. What do you, put down you your official list. What do you think is the best nine Spider-Man movies in, in the proper order? Uh, tell me why I'm wrong about each one. And like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell because I have more videos coming. I have the Don't Look Up review coming in Kanto. I still have my top 10 list of movies and TV series of 2021. And I have my favorite 27 Marvel Cinematic uh, list coming. Ooh, that's That's... That's a doozy. That's going to be crazy. So, but stay, stay tuned so you can see everything and be well.